fruits. They're not all juicy and sweet. In fact, I dare say that most of them aren't juicy and sweet. We definitely learned that with our peanut, where we saw the thing you crack open to uh, see, expose the seeds, this thing. <laughs> what a mess. Uh, not juicy and sweet. And this, of course, is a seed. And this, of course, is the cotyledons. And this is the embryo. But I digress. Um, this is a picture of a hibiscus fruit, dry, um, ripened ovary containing seeds, which we saw was divided into some chambers that showed that it was a Sincarpus gynesium. The yucca fruit that we learned about that cool symbiosis with a moth, another example of a Sincarpus gynesium. You can see it has three carpels. Fruits are classified. It's kind of an informal classification, and some of the terminology is... Um, uh, a little less precise than we might sometimes like, and sometimes there are some like really subcategories that are kind of picky picky. But the terms that are generally used in botany um, reference manuals to help you tell what a plant is, those are the ones that we're going to learn. And fruits can be sort of grouped uh, on the basis of whether or not they contain um, uh, one or more seeds. More importantly, whether they're dry or, as I mentioned before, fleshy and whether or not they split open to, re to release their seeds. And so grouping them together, the, um, we have, um, first we're going to draw our attention to the seeds that are, the fruits rather, that are one-seeded and dry and don't split at maturity. And a fruit that's one-seeded and dry and does not split at maturity to really release its seed really could be mistaken for a seed. And a lot of times they are called seeds. Um, sunflower, quote, seeds, unquote, are actually sunflower fruits crack one open and the seed is inside, you crack open the ovary and a lot of wild um, fruits that are that are small and dry and don't split open are often just called seeds, like um, grass seed, for example. It's totally grass fruit. Some of the fruit types are ones that are, that are very numerous and they're found in a lot of families and spread across the, uh, the angiosperms and you see a lot of examples. Um, and a keen is an example of that. On the other hand, some of the fruits are found in just one or maybe just a, a very small number of families, but they're really important families. Um, a grain, the fruit of the grass family, is um, arguably, at least for humans, the most important fruit, and it's only found in the grass family. So, so um, the degree of attention we pay is based upon their, their abundance or their importance. So let's, um, we're going to learn three, I'm um, excuse me, five uh, different kinds of one seeded dry and tissue fruits. And the first one I'd like to draw your attention to is the akeen. And mostly what we want to look at is the features that distinguish them from the other ones in the category so we don't do too much writing. Um, and the thing about an akeen is that um, it's everything I said above there, um, but the seed in the ovary wall. Are more or less are more or less separate, so I'll make a a, um, a a sketch. So here would be the ovary wall, and the seed would be inside, and you can um, the, you you can o, o, you you can you can open the ovary and release this and release the seed, and that's um, um, a lot of the examples that I might give are um, grocery store examples. And that's because it's nice to have things that are familiar that we can relate to. If I mentioned, like, say, a, a Carex sedge fruit or a smartweed um, akeen, they might not conjure up something immediately. But th let's not get the idea that fruits are things that are found especially in grocery stores. No, they're found especially on plants, um, some of which make their way into grocery stores. And that's what an akeen is. Um, basically, this is a really common kind of fruit. Fruit akeen, fruit and akeen. You'll see that again and again in botanical descriptions. Um, so let's take a let, take a look at another type of fruit that's a, a dry indehiscent fruit, and um, that is a, a nut. Um, basically, everything up above is true. Um, basically, what describes a nut? It's large and has a um, um, and has and has a like a. a a bony um, covering. Exo Sometimes it's called the exocarp. Um, 
and the um, a lot of things that have nuts in their name aren't really nuts, like um, uh, walnuts and um, peanuts. Um, a uh, wild, nice wild example is an acorn, or maybe a, a, a beech nut, or a um, hickory nut. So that's what nuts are. Um, a grain, as we mentioned briefly, um, is a kind of uh, narrowly distributed among the types of plants. Um, it's um, and basically what characterizes a grain is that um, the seed and the ovary are very tightly ad adherent. I'm going to say fused. I'm not sure if they're actually fused or just very tightly adherent. Um, um, and so basically with a grain, you, um, you can't just crack one open and, and release the seed. Uh, and the other thing about the, about the grain is that the grain is the fruit of the grass family. So it's kind of narrowly focused, but it's by far the most important family, at least, well, economically, it's super important with rice and um, oats and um, wheat and um, barley, but also super important ecologically. Grasses are really, are really common and abundant plants in ecosystems too. So, um, yeah, from, how can I draw this? It's kind of hard to draw it because, because, why does it do that? Because, um, yeah, I'm not going to try to draw it. What I want to do, do is conjure up an image that, um, like brown rice, as opposed to white rice, so the, what happens is the brown rice is milled. It's like, you know, sand, you sand off the ovary and you end up with the starchy um, endosperm and a teeny embryo that are inside. And that's what, um, what grains are. Here's one of my favorites. It's called... It's called a Samara, and the Samara is basically an akeen with a wing. Um, it's, a, it's a fruit that's, that's uh, adapted for wind dispersal. And these guys are kind of common. Um, and um, I can draw that one. So I'll draw a maple one. So here's the, uh, you know, these maple, sometimes, they're to, sometimes, they, start, sometimes they, they sort of start out double. But that would be two fruits. Ta -da. Um, and I think we're all sort of, all familiar with that. Also, I don't think there are any maple, any samaras in the grocery store. Lots of forest trees have winged akeens, called samaras, for uh, their fruits. Uh, elms have them, and ash has them, and um, uh, a tulip tree has them, and tree of heaven has samaras. And this is the kind of thing as you sometimes see, you know, blowing down after a windstorm, like we had a couple of days ago. A final kind of fruit that's that's um, uh, peculiar and and found in, if you interpret it narrowly, only one plant family, the so the the parsley family, A P A C E, is called a schizocarp, and. Um, it's an important plant family. It's also very interesting. Very interesting. I have to check how to spell that. S-C-H? Yes. Um, schizocarp. And if you look at the word schizocarp, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. I'm thinking of the psychological disorder called schizophrenia, which used to be called having a split personality or a schism, you know, which is a, which is a, 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 a a rift or an argument between people say it means split and fruit carp fruit um, so a schizocarp is a split fruit um, so basically a schizocarp is from um, a, a syncarpus gynesium that has two carpels so you think of a ovary with two chambers in it and what it does is uh, it splits in a maturity. Instead of split, uh, splitting into splitting apart to release the seeds, it splits into um, it splits into two, two, uh, one, one, one seeded units. So each one of these one seeded units would kind of look like an akeen. It'd be dry, it'd be indehiscent, would have one seed inside. It would you know, look like a seed. In fact, 
they're called seeds. You know, if you said dill seed or fennel seed or anise seed, um, those three things I mentioned are members of this family. Um, um, so it's found basically only in the only in um, a family called the Apaceae. Apaceae, and the Apaceae is the parsley family. And um, I'm gonna let's about families we haven't discussed this formally and officially yet but as you know um you know Linnaean classification system kingdom phylum class order family then genus and then species um the family is uh, uh a nice convenient taxonomic group to sort of gain an understanding of what groups of plants are what plants are like and the way in which we know a plant, that, that a word signifies a plant family is by this ending A-C-E-A-E. -E. I think it's pronounced A-C-E. -E. And so anytime you see like Fabaceae or Betulaceae or, or, or Polygonaceae or Orchidaceae or Cyperaceae or Malvaceae, you know that it's a family ending. The first part of the word is derived from the, an important genus in the family. So there's a genus called Apium, which, by the way, is um, celery. And so this family is called the Apiaceae. So if you look at family names and you know enough of the genera, you can usually figure out the genus. And we'll do that as we go along. But let's, let's get back to the important part. Um, so a member of the Apiaceae in flower would, would kind of look like, uh, like they have very tiny sepals. They have very tiny sepals. So we'll just draw the petals. And they have sort of an expanded, why does it keep doing that? They have kind of expanded, oh, I think I see why. Okay, good, maybe that won't happen again. I think I'm pressing on a part of the pen that invokes that. Uh, they have kind of a, nope, <laughs> too much for that theory. Um, hypothesis, I guess. Uh, so they have two styles. And notice, by the way, they have an inferior ovary. So here it is in flower. This is in flower. And then in fruit, um, it splits apart. So each one of these, these um, halves of the ovary. Hmm, that's the world's worst drawing. That's so drawing. That's even bad by my standards. Let me start over again. So it's going to be like that. And then it's going to be like that. It's going to be like, there we go. That's better. No, it's not. We'll move along. Nothing to see here. Uh, and it's and each one of these um, falls as one seeded units. So it's a it's a schizocarp. There are pictures coming up, photographs, I promise. Um, and so they look like achenes. They're one seeded units, but they are totally not um, not um, are derived from a, from a, a simple um, uh, um, carpal that has one seed in it originally. It's called a schizocarp. Okay, hooray! Pictures. I promise you pictures. So these pictures are going to be. First, a picture of the plants in fruit, and then a picture of the plants in, in, in flower. So this, this is a little, um, requires some interpretation. This, of course, is a dandelion uh, in fruit, the puffy thing you blow on. And oh, by the way, dandelions are a member of a plant family called the Asteraceae, named after asters, which is a big genus in that family. And um, what looks like an individual flower, I'm going to jump ahead. See how many flowers are there? Dozens. Each one of these yellow tongue-like things represents or is, is the major part of an individual flower. So these small flowers are packed together into a, a head-like inflorescence called a capitulum. And so when we have a dandelion in fruit, um, there's actually lots of fruits um, because there were lots of flowers. And each one of these is a one-seeded dry inhus in fruit. <clears throat> it's an achene. Uh, I'm got, not being super too picky. It turns out that the ones in the uh, Aster family are sometimes subdivided into something else with its special name. It's called a Clipsella. And maybe the ones with this fluffy on it are called that, not others. But in general, to understand the biology and to be able to, to uh, recognize the term that's very often used, they're very often simply called achenes. Great. So, um, and the achenes, again, are common in the, in, in, in the, the flowering plants. A lot of of uh, plants have achenes, and we'll see a lot of examples of achenes. I'm, I'm aching to I'm aching to show you all these different examples. 
I need a left rack. Um, this is a Samara. Um, this is, so this is a tree called Tree of Heaven, which really should be called Tree of Hell because it's a very uh, nasty invasive tree that uh, takes over forests. What I just drew a little circle around, if you can see, is where the seed is. So most of what we see here is a wing. And when these break off, um, they spiral through the air and they find themselves a sufficient considerable distance from the parent plant. Um, and we'll see a lot of nice examples of of samaras. There are some samaras that are even that are mature now, which is why we're going to um, be using our uh, next purchase, the um, William Harlow fruit key and twig key, and we're going to use it for the for some fruits and also for twigs. That's actually two books, two books in one. Really cool. Here's the picture of the tree of heaven in flower. It's kind of weird flower. They're really small. Um, I see stamens. I see a pistil. Here's here's a stamen. Here's the here's the pistil. It doesn't look anything like that. What it matures into, hmm. a nut. Um, you know, one seeded fruit with a with a hard a hard bony exocarp. You know, covering ovary wall, and um, acorns. Acorns are nuts. This is also edible. Some of them are bitter. You're supposed to boil them and change the water. The red oaks are bitterer than the white oaks. This is a white oak, um, and this is the this is the flower of that oak. This is a that plant that's monoecious, one of those plants that have separate sexed flowers. So this is a female flower, and then, and here's the ovary, and these are you know style lobes, um, stigma lobes. I mean the style is very short. Yeah, that's a flower. That's beautiful. Look at that beautiful flower. Oh, let's make a little corsage, a little bouquet. Um, Grasses. I don't have a picture of before and after with the with this for some reason, but the fruit of the grass family is uh, is called a grain. There's a technical other annoying name for it. Sometimes it's called a caryopsis. Um, it's just another name for grain because I don't know. People already know the name grain, so let's pronounce some brain cells by coming up with another term, caryopsis. I'm going to write it down since I mentioned it a few times. Caryopsis um, equals grain. I'm not sure why they did that show-offs. And this is the schizocarp. Um, and as you can see, as you can see, um, there, there are these two units that it's splitting into. This one's better. Um, and so this one right here, when you see it on the ground, you might think it's an akeen. It's a one-seated dry indecent jabiru. But if you go back in time, let's do that. Boom. If you go back in time, what you see is um, flowers okay here's a flower the petals fallen off of but what you can see is here's the over the pistil and here's the ovary um and there's not much of a style but these are the uh, these are the stigma branches and uh, this is what it looks like in flower and in fruit it divides up into those those um, one seeded units called the schizocarp and this is a fruit that's only found um if you interpret it narrowly in the parsley family kind of important family a very fascinating family um, a lot of nice spicy things some really deadly poisonous things and a really nice distinctive kind of aspect um, about which more later so that's a quick look at fruits that are um, dry and dehiscent fruits ones that you might somehow call seeds uh, next we're going to learn about oh yeah here's some more pictures yeah how about a review here's a review here's a picture of an akeen showing the, um, the 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 seed here and the ovary wall here and you can see the space between here's a picture of a nut showing the oh per pericarp that's the word they use instead of exocarp okay i i i can handle that uh, and there's one a big seed inside and a grain the, the, notice that in the picture of the grain that the that the that the that the seed is is i should draw a little arrow there boom is very tightly adherent to the outside the pericarp the ovary wall the samara basically is a wind dispersed akeen with a wing and the schizocarp um, twin fruits that's what they are twin fruits and over on the left here we see what it might look like before it's split apart and when it splits apart it looks like akeens but it has a different origin so next up we're going to learn about what do we learn about Oh, several of many seeded fruits that split open and release their seeds. That's cool. Looking forward to that. Thanks for watching. Tune in again for, for um, fruit.
fruits and seeds for the botanically inclined.